Dan and I had a little chat. By a little chat, I mean a six-hour Twitter space that I didn't record. Regardless, I had the opportunity to talk with Ryan Carniato, the creator of Solid, as well as Dan Abramov, the legend from the React Core team, all about React server components. And man, did I learn a lot. I want to focus on four of the things we talked about in the space. There was a lot more, but these are the things that really stood out to me. The last one I actually pushed back on a lot, so make sure you stick to the end if you want to hear my gripes with server components and the way that they're being discussed. First thing I wanted to bring up is Dan's model for discussing server components. Before server components, you'd have a pretty clear boundary of where your server ends and your client starts. So usually once the HTML or JSON is sent, the client takes over. Server components have a more interesting model where server boundaries can be defined and redefined and moved around, and you can have multiple of them in a single route. He used an interesting word to describe this new relationship between the server and the client, and the more I've thought about it, the more I think it really fits. He described it as knitting. You take these strands and weave them in and out over and under each other. You enable a level of composability and physical control. It's hard to put into words, honestly, and that's, that's why I like this phrasing so much, is it Server components feel like a much more tangible way to play with the boundaries of your server and your client. And I personally had never experienced anything quite like it before. Astro gets close in a lot of ways, but it's still very clearly client-side JavaScript frameworks and server-side Astro files, rather than this, this truly unique pattern that React has, where you are just kind of writing components. Because Dan's obviously been pushing this and the whole React core team is moving in the direction of server components, the topic of the docs obviously came up. The new docs had just shipped. They no longer were recommending Create React App. They were now recommending Next and the new server component patterns. Does that mean that everyone should be using server components in their React apps? Well, obviously we all can't. A lot of us are on services and have systems relying on static files and CDNs to run everything on the client and we can't just move. But is it the role of the docs to empower everybody or to empower the future React is pushing towards? Dan pushed that this is actually the wrong question to ask. And yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot. I even talked about it with Evan Yu in my interview with him. If you haven't seen that, I'll pin it in the description somewhere. The idea that React has to be client for it to be simple and easy to learn isn't necessarily true. And it's important that we as developers understand that HTML is the thing the server sends and renders originally on our client, and then the client can take over and do things from there. React being static, so to speak, by default with server components actually makes it easier to understand. And when you introduce the interaction boundary with use client, you're saying to the compiler, but also to a developer, new or old, you're very explicitly telling them, here is where interactions start to occur. You can click buttons, you can do things, you can interact with this code. Previously, it can render things and make things appear on your page, but in order for it to, to interact, you have to use this other paradigm. And I think the docs should push this, not because everyone will have to use server components, but, but because I think it's a better model for understanding and thinking about how our applications work. I'm beginning to think React being static first with dynamic behaviors under client components actually makes it easier to understand and learn what React does. It's easier than learning React, subscribing to the channel. It's pretty crazy because 40% of y'all haven't subbed yet. If you want to see the next like six videos I have about server components coming soon, make sure you hit that bell as well. It will guarantee YouTube sends you notification when you click all. This does bring the relationship between the next and React teams into question. And we talked quite a bit about this. I, I understand the concern. People see React getting so close with Next and assume that means the innovation we've seen over the years of many frameworks and many solutions by the community, that we won't have that in the future. And I, I wholly reject that. Not because I think Vercel's this really kind, great company, and yes, they do pay me. They have no idea making this video though, so unrelated. I think the excitement on the React team moved to Vercel. Not that people who are on the React team had to work at Vercel in order to make the money that they're excited about, I mean, the natural direction for React was towards the server. And if you're a React core team member that cares about servers and wants to help React move in that direction, there is no company that understands React and servers better than Vercel. I keep seeing people say stuff like Vercel bought the React core team. That's not how it worked. Sebastian moved to Vercel. Sebastian wanted to make React do cooler things that it couldn't do as a client-side library. And Vercel was the place to do it. 
We talked a bit about this and how excited Dan was about this collaboration. He said that he has been consistently surprised and excited by how willing the Next team has been to embrace these new React patterns. If anything, Next has thrown away the majority of its framework. Get server-side props, get static props, all the original route paradigms, all of what makes Next Next is gone in favor of these new React patterns. And Dan and many other members of the core React team are very, very hyped that Next was so willing to embrace these patterns when almost every other framework pushed back. Many of those frameworks are going to adopt some of these patterns, many won't. All of them will get to learn and grow. But more excitedly, I think that the paradigms introduced with server components make it easier to build new frameworks around them. Ryan Carniato pointed this out during the conversation is you don't have files that run on server and client. You have files that run on both or files that just run on server. And it's pretty easy now using the use client directive to know which files get bundled and put where. Previously, you needed to be a Webpack and Vite wizard if you wanted to make a React-based framework that had a client and server files. It's very hard when JavaScript is JavaScript, it runs on both. How do you tell your bundler to send the right files to client and not send certain ones, not accidentally leak environment variables and stuff like that? It's not easy, but server components make it a hell of a lot easier. And even if current frameworks can't adopt these patterns, future ones will not only be able to, they'll be excited to, because it'll be easier than ever before to do. We can't end this without me talking about my pushback, though. I'm sorry, Dan. Use client's a bad name. Client components don't run on client. They run on client and server. When you write the use client directive, you're not telling React, don't run this on server. You're telling React, also run this on client. But what is a server and a client anymore? All of these words are losing their meaning, and I get that they're trying to use familiar words, so it feels like we're learning less new stuff. But we still have to learn and understand this. This is a new pattern. We need to get it. So what should it have been named? I proposed use interactive, and I, I'm going to die on this hill. Use client should have been use interactive to make it clearer that the role of the client side component isn't to be a client only pile of JavaScript. It's to allow the user to interact with that JavaScript. Interaction boundaries are how we should be thinking about our React applications rather than server versus client versus server back and forth all over the place. The, the weaving gets a little intense. But if we think about it as interaction boundaries, from here down, interactions occur. And there are parts underneath that might not be interactive because you may pass server components as children. But for interactions to occur, you need to have defined an interaction boundary and underneath that interaction boundary, you need to mount a component. As long as you do that, you can do interactions, you can use state and do all the things we're used to in React. But I don't think client component is the right word for that. I hope there's still time to reconsider the naming here because I'm very concerned using the words client and server in these ways may confuse people if we don't clearly define why in an obvious in your face way. If you want to hear more about server components and how they replace APIs, I have a video about that here. It's one of my favorites. And honestly, this future is so compelling. Thank you to Dan for taking the time to hang out in the space with us. And thank you all for watching this video.